Let's get started by getting it plugged in and threaded up. Start by plugging in the power cord on the side of the machine. And the foot control also has its own plug-in. And turn it on. Now we have light. Let's get this all set up. Let's take a look first at the thread that you will be using. Thread comes on the spools, and it jumps around two ways. Crosswound thread has little X's on it here. So that thread we're actually gonna put on the horizontal spool pin. And thread that lays side to side, like it lays right next to each other all the way up the th spool, is called stack thread. And that one we'll actually need to use our vertical spool pin, which you'll find in the accessory bag. That's gonna go right up here. And there is kind of that little felt pad if you feel you need it. That goes right there, and then this would come right there. It makes it so it doesn't kind of spin away once you kind of get going on a fast speed. We'll go ahead and set that aside for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and thread up with the crosswound thread. Now, when you get your machine out of the box, your large spool cap is actually on your machine already. Now, this is a little big for this spool. Save that for your larger spools that you might have and look for the smaller spool cap. It actually doesn't matter which way this thread comes off the spool. Some people ask, well, does it need to come off the bottom or off the top? And I'm like, it really doesn't matter. Just put it on. Make sure though that the spool cap, when you place it on, there's no gap between there. That is key for success because if there's a little gap in there, that thread will drop in and get tight and tangle and well, it breaks your thread, breaks your needle, not fun. Okay, so nice and tight. And we're gonna start off by winding a bobbin. Here's the thing with bobbins. First off, you're gonna find three in your accessory bag and one empty one down here in the machine. So you have a total of four when you get started. The one thing you wanna keep in mind is that bobbins are not a mix and match option. So if you have metal ones from other machines, don't use it in your brand new machine. These are specific Viking bobbins. You are gonna to need to check with your dealer and make sure that you are picking up the bobbins for a Viking emerald soy machine. So like I said, just make sure you always have the same one. Just because it's plastic and you have older plastic ones, make sure that they are, um, that you don't use them because they can be of different size. Okay, so for winding a bobbin, we're gonna go ahead and start by coming underneath this little guide here. I like to do that because then it keeps the thread coming smoothly in a straight line off the spool. Then we're gonna come around the pretensioner. This little pretensioner here, we only use for winding a bobbin. Going around it clockwise, one full time around. Now it's key your thread goes underneath that. Have you ever wound a bobbin that turns out kind of fluffy? Well, that is because you didn't get it in the little tension area. So don't ever use them if you, for any reason, don't get a nice tight wound on your bobbin when you're done. So we're gonna start off by taking our thread and from the inside to out, threading it through one of the holes. Come over, place it on the machine, and then to engage it, push it to the right. I'm gonna hold this thread up, so about three inches. So when it starts to spin, I'm gonna just hold it and it will eventually break off. Now if you step on the foot control now, you're gonna notice that the needle's gonna go up and down, which you don't need it running while you're winding a bobbin. So take the hand wheel, pull straight out, you'll hear a little click, and that will disengage the needle from running and just let you wind a bobbin only. As you hold on to this, it's gonna get nice and tight and stop. Now I did notice that it broke off but it left a little tail. Make sure that when you clip this, you clip so nothing is left sticking up out of that little guy. That can get in the way for when the stitches are actually formed. So these bobbins are nice big bobbins. They're gonna fill up a lot of your thread. So just definitely uh, get it all the way full. Love to be able to sew and sew and sew and not have to run out of bobbin. When it is full, it will stop spinning. Just keep an eye on it and sew until it stops. There you go. So just go ahead, stop sewing, clip your thread, and then go ahead and move it to the left, lift up, put your hand wheel back in, and that will re-engage the needle for running here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our bobbin in. When we put our bobbin in, we want the thread hanging off the left-hand side. By doing that, you will match up with the picture that is actually on the bobbin case door. That's your reference guide, so you always put the bobbin in correctly. It needs to actually spin counterclockwise. Just a little groove down here at six o'clock. Lay the little thread in there, and then bring it out to the left side. Notice I kind of put my finger on it so it holds it, and that will keep it and put it into the tension area for the bobbin. 
Forget about this, leave the door up until you bring your bobbin thread up. Okay, coming back up to the top side, we are gonna undo the pretensioner. Again, that is only used for winding a bobbin. We're gonna find ourselves going underneath the first guide. Be sure your presser foot is up for threading your machine. If it's down, you're gonna miss part of the area in the tension, then it won't get threaded. So I'm having it up, then I'm gonna continue. We're bringing it straight down straight back up. There's little arrows that you can find on the machine to kind of guide you as you're getting used to it. You're gonna come in on the right side, move it over to the left and bring it towards you and it will sit into the take up lever little eye. Then bring it all the way down. There's one guide at the top of the needle and then we're gonna use the needle threader. We'll do a close up video on how the needle threader works. It is pretty awesome where it just comes in, you put your thread in, it pulls the loop right on through and voila, you're done. Now on this machine, we have the needle stopping up or down button right here. I love to use it for actually bringing my bobbin thread up because then you don't have to turn this hand wheel. Watch this, touch it two times. One, two. Oh, it's, it was set to stop in the down position. So really, if you touch it one time, it's gonna go down halfway. Touch it again, it pops it up and, it pull, and then pull that loop out. That was your bobbin thread, it brings right on up and then put those threads underneath the foot and to the back. You can put your door on next and we are ready to stitch. We're gonna go ahead and just take some fabric. A little trick about testing your sewing machine. Always sew on two layers of fabric. As you fold your fabric in half, that is great. So you don't always need two layers. Just go ahead and fold something in half. I'm gonna look over here for, we're on a straight stitch and a medium stitch length. I just wanna make sure first that I have everything threaded. Now, did you notice I don't have to hold these threads in the back? All I was doing is just making sure they're where they need to be, which they can be anywhere from out here at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or 12, straight out the back at 12 o'clock. When you put your fabric in, you don't have to hold those threads as long as your needle is gonna go into fabric first. So if you're way back here when you start sewing and it's not gonna go into th to the fabric, yes, hold those threads. But all you have to do, slide in just a little bit and then go ahead and stitch. Oh, I love the way these machines sound. They're just so, they're like little powerhouses. We actually use this particular model, uh, the Emerald 118, as our rental machine in the store. That means that if we send this home with somebody who's just gonna like use it hard for a weekend, oh, we don't care because it's got the features, it's got the power, and it's gonna handle whatever project they might be using. What we can do is set the machine to stop with the needle either up or down. I love this. So if I push it one time, now, every time I stop sewing, the needle's gonna stop in the fabric. Notice it takes that stitch and finishes it, and then I can lift and turn a corner if I'd like. Really easy to go around appliques this way, so you're not having to turn the hand wheel at all. When you're done sewing, though, touch the button one time and lift up the presser foot. You have a little cutter on this back corner here. From, um, just bring it from the back towards you. You can do it with one hand. It cuts the thread and you're ready to go. Let me show you how you can do a locking stitch. If you're stitching and wanna go backwards, you can stitch, hold that lever down, and we'll just do a couple stitches back. As soon as you let go, it will stitch forward again. That's a great way to lock your stitches at the beginning and ending of your seam. We also have a speed control. So whether you're working with something that you just don't want it to be racing off on you, you're doing free motion quilting. I like it about three quarters to a half speed. You're working with youngsters, getting them trained. That's a great way to set it to a really, here's the max speed. Isn't that awesome? And then as we go a little faster and then full speed. We have all that control. And also too, when you stop and you have it set so the needle is out of the fabric, your take up lever is at the highest position, making it ideal for go ahead and pulling it out and cutting your thread. Once again, and not having to hold those threads when you start to sew. All right, we'll get into more of the stitches and all the accessories that come with this machine in all the next videos.